Scientifically proven is the fact that humor or laughter will relax all the muscles in your body for up to 48 hours. So let's uh, talk about humor, right? Right? Okay. Um, I recently moved to Lusaka and from the Copper Belt. And I learned two things. Number one, this is not the Copper Belt. <laughs> Number two, you have to have money. Last year, I was stranded in Lusaka with only 100 kwacha in my pocket, which I used to pay for a bed at a backpacker's. For those who haven't been to one, it's basically a classroom, but you replace desks with beds. Just a bunch of people sleeping. But I remember that night for me involved no sleep, and I was trying to think about my next move. But there was this 60-something-year-old looking white man who seemed to have been enjoying his sleep so much he was breaking wind the entire night which was the last thing I needed at the moment you know it was like trying to meditate in a nightclub with bad loud music but surprisingly it was the one thing that made me laugh at the whole situation and let's be honest if you if you found someone in a bad situation and they were laughing hysterically, you'd think they're crazy. I mean, ha, 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 ha. You're like, why are you laughing? Somebody just stole my car. But as the saying goes, if you can find some humor in a very difficult situation, you've won. And that to me comes almost naturally all the time. And here's why. I grew up in an extended family, as do most Zambians, and mine was a Bemba extended family. You may or may not know this, but Bembas are known for talking too much, especially in the insult and sarcasm department. It's one of the best ways we know how to relate to each other. Uh, in my family, Tuale Ishowasa, we used to tease each other a lot and laugh at and make light of our difficult situations. For example, my family had this joke that your nose looks like it was glued to your face. <laughs> when there is no food to eat, I would go to my grandmother and say, Mbuya, tola di and she would go, Kasambe. <laughs> go and bath. You can't be hungry and dirty at the same time. And, and, and as mean as that may sound, it used to crack me up all the time to the point I even forget I'm hungry. My grandmother also had another thing she used to say. She used to say, kubiri, meaning, a situation is not difficult on both ends. There's always the end to a situation that is easy to deal with. And this was not so true than at her funeral. Yes, my grandmother died. It was very sad. Uh, she was like a pillar in our family. But at her burial service, there's this tradition, a culture in Zambia, where men line up and they exchange shovels to throw sand on the coffin to bury it, right? So we're there, one, another one. So I don't know what my grandmother did to this particular guy, but he seemed very excited to bury my grandmother. <laughs> he came up, grabbed the shovel, and you know excitement brings energy, right? So instead of throwing sand on the coffin, he was throwing it <laughs> over his shoulder to the back. And he had these like four group of friends that were cheering him on. And they were calling him Obama <laughs> for some reason. I don't know how that relates. But, you know, we all laughed all the way back to the funeral house. And, you know, that went into talking about my grandmother's values and principles and how much she would have killed that guy. Um, anyway, 
Years later, I, I am a cartoonist, and I tried to pass this way of dealing with issues onto others, incorporating um, cartoons, humor, plus satire, right? Sarcasm, truth, humor. Because seriousness is often not the right response to a difficult situation. A lot of people are not comfortable with the way they look. They're not comfortable with their personality. They're not comfortable with their condition, whether it's mental, physical, emotional. They're not comfortable with the environment, political, economic, etc. And you can try to act, right? You can act, you can put on makeup if you don't like the way you look. You can go on social media, filters, right? Cosmetic surgery of any kind, right? You can put up Oscar winning acting, but that's not for you. You're not doing that for yourself, you're doing that for others and it works. Others will believe you're okay, everything is fine. But when you're alone in a room, the truth still exists, you're not okay, things are not fine. And that was me that night at Backpackers, not so alone in the room, right? Engulfed in a cloud of farts <laughs> with the truth that I'm broke, I'm hungry, I'm stranded, I'm desperate. But with everything I learned growing up, naturally I found something to laugh about. Eliminating embarrassment, fear to even talk to my friends and, you know, asking for help. And I did ask for help and it worked out. And that's the big deal, isn't it? We're embarrassed to tell ourselves the truth. We're embarrassed to tell ourselves that truth, that we're not okay, we're not fine, everything is not okay. And that's where humor comes in. Humor helps that truth, whatever that truth is that you find difficult to tell yourself and others, easy to digest. Individually, as a family, as a group, as a society, as a country, as a continent, even as a globe, the things we're going through that are difficult to overcome, but we want to overcome those things. And humor is a perfect and effective mechanism to propel you into that direction. I have done a lot of cartoons on your most serious political, economic, social, religious issue in the country or even across the continent. We can't show them up there because I'm not a very well-behaved cartoonist. Um, but recently I did a cartoon about uh, about the billions and billions of dollars that uh, African countries collectively owe. And one of my followers commented saying, thank you for making a sad and um, difficult situation funny. And that's the point. I'm not saying forget or hide from your problems. I'm saying face them, but with a little bit of humor, whatever amount that is, okay? I'll give an example of uh, Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson is a American comedian who is known for doing dad jokes. But it's, only, it's not like ordinary dad jokes. It's about his dad, who was a fireman who died during 9-11. And he likes making fun of that almost in all his acts. And not a lot of people can appreciate that material. Okay, some people want to just keep quiet about it. Whenever you talk about it, they go crazy. But he, I can guarantee you, it's safe to say that he has helped both himself and others to face that issue of losing a loved one during 9-11. Do you know what Mark Twain said is the most effective weapon that mankind possesses? Does anyone know? No? He said laughter. Okay, it's not what those two presidents have been, you know, fighting over. 
It's not nuclear weapons, no. It's laughter. So the next time you face a difficult situation, try to find what my grandmother called the other end. The other end of a bad situation, which is looking at a difficult situation from the humorous perspective. Just try that. I'm not going to be here telling you whether it works or not. You try that and see if it works or it doesn't work. Thank you.